The first of the communication buses we'll look at is Crestnet. Many Crestron devices can communicate by Crestnet, such as shade motors, thermostats, keypads, and expansion modules. Most Crestron lighting modules also use Crestnet as their primary communication. Crestnet offers several benefits. It's a proprietary communication protocol. This means it is only for Crestron devices, which simplifies communication and control of these devices. As explained in the previous video, using a bus allows many Crestron devices to communicate with the processor while using only one connector. The Crestnet network carries both power and data on the same cable, simplifying connection and cable runs. The Crestnet cable can be run in a variety of ways. Each device can be home run back to the processor or can be set as wide in parallel, wide as a T connection or a Y connection. Just don't make a loop. This makes Crestnet very easy to implement and very flexible. Crestnet was more widely used in older systems, with nearly every Crestron device using it to communicate with the processor, although there are still many devices, such as lighting systems with keypads and dimmers, using Crestnet as their primary communication type. Crestnet is a serial communication protocol, like RS-232, but with some differences. With RS-232, there is a single cable between the processor and the device. Crestnet, however, is more similar to the RS-485 protocol, allowing many devices to be placed on a single cable. With many devices on the Crestnet bus or network, the processor needs to know where to direct its traffic and which device is sending information. For this reason, every device on Crestnet needs its own unique ID. Crestnet allows for 252 devices on its bus. Every device gets a two-digit ID. Every model of Crestnet device has a default ID. If a system had one of a particular model of keypad and one of a particular model of dimmer, the devices could be left with their default IDs. If I had two keypads, then at least one of the keypads will need its ID changed. With 252 devices available, there are 252 unique IDs. How do we get 252 IDs with only two digits? Crestnet IDs are set using hexadecimal numbers. Hexadecimal is a base 16 counting system. This differs from the base 10 counting system we're more familiar with. With the base 10 or decimal counting system, there are 10 unique digits, zero to nine. When we need to count higher than this, we indicate this with a one and a zero. The digit one represents the fact that we've started again. We then reuse the same digits to go from 10 to 19. Higher than this, we have a two and a zero. The two indicates you've started again twice and we continue in this way. The base 16 hexadecimal system starts in the same way with the digit zero to nine. However, after this, we continue with A, B, C, D, E, and F. This gives us 16 unique digits, zero to F. If we need to count higher than this, we then go back to one and zero, the one indicating that we've started again once. This gives us a range between zero, zero and FF, which is 256 unique IDs using only two digits. IDs zero, one, and two are reserved for the processor. ID FF is reserved to be a broadcast address. This means of the 256 unique numbers, 252 are available for our Crestnet IDs. The range is 03 to FE. The important thing about Crestnet IDs is that the device must be set to the correct ID as declared in the program. The programmer will decide which ID each device needs to be set to. Crestnet uses a two-pair cable. This provides a shielded, twisted pair for the control data and another pair for power and ground within a single PVC sheath. The power pair normally uses an 18-gauge wire. However, a higher power version is also available for longer distances using a 12-gauge wire. This carries a 24-volt VC and ground for the devices. Data uses a 22-gauge wire. The data pins on the Crestnet connector are labeled as Y and Z 
for data plus and minus, as CrestNet is a balanced communication. The ground for the data is shared with the power ground. If you do not need power, then you can just run the three wires, Y, Z, and ground. 